In the last video, we presented uh, a continuous basis that allows us to bring the abstract uh, state of a quantum system into the uh, position space. In this video, we'll present another popular basis, a continuous basis, uh, which is the momentum basis. And you can think of this, uh, it's akin to choosing a different coordinate system in classical mechanics. Some problems are easier to solve in the position basis, other problems are easier to solve in the momentum basis. So the momentum basis is a, a set that will denote by a cat P. This is continuous complete and orthonormal uh, for which if you operate on it with the momentum operator, uh, you get back the momentum of your, of your particle. Okay, so these are eigenfunctions of the momentum operator. This is uh, the eigenvalue. And this is, uh, for example, the momentum of a particle. This basis has the same properties as, uh, or analogous properties to the position basis. It has the rack orthonormality. Which says that if you take the inner product of two uh, elements of this basis set, this satisfies uh, this equality. It's equal to a direct delta function. It's also a complete basis, which means that if you integrate. Uh, this outer product, which we saw was uh, an operator over all of uh, momentum space. This is the unit operator. We can also, uh, just as we did for the position basis, can also expand a general state cat psi in the momentum basis. So we can express this as an integral, the inner product between P and Psi. Like so. So remember this is in general, a complex number. In this case, this complex number corresponds to the momentum space wave function. And we'll denote that by psi tilt as a function of P and T. Okay, so just to make it clear, that's This inner product is by definition the momentum space wave function. Okay, and again, this is analogous to the original expansion that we saw for a discrete basis where it was a sum of the coefficients. There's also an, the same interpretation from postulate four that says if you take the square modulus of this quantity, it gives you a probability that a particle has momentum between P and dP. Uh, P plus DP. Okay. 
We can also use what we've seen in the last two videos to uh, express the momentum upper area in the position basis. So in general, you can express an operator in a given basis. Uh, one that is particularly useful is uh, the momentum operator in the position basis. You can also express the position operator in the momentum basis, but we won't go through that. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use uh, this fundamental relationship in quantum mechanics that says that the commutator of the uh, position operator, which we're using capital letters for, and the momentum operator. So by definition, this is equal to this. Uh, this is not equal to zero. This is equal to I h bar times the unit operator. And this is a central result of quantum mechanics, this non-commutativity of operators, uh, which gives rise to all of the, a lot of the weirdness of quantum mechanics. So we're going to uh, look at the expectation value of this commutator in the position uh, basis. And we're going to do that by operating on the left and the right by two distinct um, elements of the position basis. So X prime and X. These in general are different. That's why I'm differentiating them with one having a prime and one not having a prime. So this is capital. And by this commutation relationship, this will be equal to I H bar, because it's a number, we can just remove it. The unit operator doesn't do anything. So it's just equal to this inner product between the two elements of our position basis. So, if we break this up, since uh, we're dealing with uh, linear operators, we can break this difference up. Uh, okay, so I've just split this up into two distinct uh, expectation values. And this, uh, this is the Dirac cost normality for the position basis that we mentioned in the last video. So this is equal to the Dirac delta function. Now, this uh, element is easy. This uh, position operator is just acting directly on this cat, uh, which is an eigenvalue equation. So for this one, you just get back the position eigenvalue. And we still don't know what, how the position operator acts on these, so we'll leave it like that. This one, because the position operator has to be a Hermitian operator, since it corresponds to a physical observable, we can think of this operator as acting on the bra. Okay, so we can think of it as uh, just this part taking the uh, Hermitian conjugate of that, and you get uh, this part, this part over here. So what that means is uh, you again have an eigenvalue equation where you extract the position eigenvalue. These two quantities are the same, so we can factor it out and isolate it.
And what you get is something like this. The expectation value of the position operator in the momentum basis is equal to this very strange quantity that's very singular. You have the direct delta function, which is already a strange thing, but now you've added uh, a singularity where uh, if x is equal to x prime, this would uh, be equal to zero. I won't go through it, but it turns out that uh, this is equal to minus uh, the derivative of the delta function, this quantity over here. So that what we're left with is, uh, is the following. So the expectation value of the position operator is you have this operation and the direct delta function can also be written as the inner product like this by the recourse to normality. So uh, an immediate consequence of this, so therefore, if you instead look at what happens when you operate on uh, the state of a quantum system with the position operator, this is equal to what we had over here. You have the bra of x and you replace this by psi of t. But we had already identified this inner product as the uh, position space wave function. Uh, in the previous video. So the conclusion that we can draw from this is in the position basis. Uh, this should now be partial derivatives because we have a multivariable function. Uh, is that you can express the position operator in terms of this quantity when you're working in the position basis. And this will be important to us for the next video where we uh, translate the abstract Schrodinger equation from postulate six into uh, real space.